This is the all new 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. Today we brought it out to our test hill to experience a little fun in the snow. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The Subaru Forester has always been a popular vehicle for adventure goers. The reason, Subaru symmetrical all wheel drive and lots of storage in the back. This is the 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness, the most extreme Forester ever built. So what's the difference between this and a standard Forester? Well, first off, the suspension. It's been modified for more extreme off-road conditions. Also, more ground clearance. You're looking at 9.2 inches overall. So you might be asking, why does this only have 9.2 inches when the Outback Wilderness has 9.6? The reason? It's kind of funny. The production line in Japan cannot handle anything taller. That's it. That's the reason. Under the hood is a four-cylinder boxer engine that produces up to 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. It is, of course, connected to a continuously variable transmission, and it pushes power to all four wheels using Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system enhanced with dual-function X mode. EPA rates economy at 25 in the city and 28 on the highway. The standard tires on this Forester Wilderness are Yokohama Geolander All-Terrains. They are a 225-60 R17 fitment, and they are peak rated for snow. So, uh, yeah, we should be nicely equipped for today. We'll see. With all those details out of the way, it's time to hit the course. But first, I'm gonna go walk it to see how treacherous this is gonna be. Well, this isn't too bad. It looks like it's about one and a half inches of snow. Everything is still frozen. I was uh, mostly concerned that this would actually have thawed because we're kind of at around 30 degrees and in the sun it has thawed a bit, but right here in the shade, it's looking nice and crunchy. Oh, look, elk tracks. Whew. Okay, enough chatting. Let's start driving. Whew. Well, it's nice and warm in here at least. So as far as cold weather stuff, uh, this does have um, heated side mirrors. It also has heated seats, both high and low. Unfortunately, it does not have heated seats in the second row, much to the sadness of my children. So I've driven this vehicle, obviously, in a number of other videos. Uh, fairly recently, actually, we took this on our new off-road course out on the peninsula, and that one, we really experienced dirt and mud. Well, today we have snow and ice, totally different end of the spectrum, same exact vehicle. In fact, the wheels are still scratched up from where I went through the mud. You gotta watch that on the mud. Sorry, Subaru. I'll give you a call. Anyway. So we have a number of courses here on our Eastern Washington test hill. Uh, we have uh, the Rattler, which is covered in rocks with a steep climb at the end. Uh, we have the Sidewinder, which is super wiggly and has a couple logs buried in it. And then we have Gopher Run, which is the very last course. And it's kind of like a steep, windy road through the forest. Um, only we have no forest here. All the trees actually died when a forest fire went through here about a decade ago. Oh, well. So, oh, this snow is really crunchy. We're definitely gonna see how well these tires can deal with ice and snow today, that's for sure. A little bit of grinding under there. Okay, so this particular section of the course is all covered in uh, rocks. And then on top of that, of course, we have ice and snow. We also have some twigs and stuff. Uh, <laughs> this is where I'm thankful that this vehicle actually has underbody armor. It has an extra piece. Now, it's kind of a little confusing when you spec one of these vehicles out in that it says it comes with underbody protection, and it does. However, you can optionally add a larger bash plate in the front, which this one has. So do you need it? Well, that depends on what kind of driving you do, what kind of roads you go on. If you're on forest roads with large rocks all the time and you have a risk of knocking something on the underside that's vital, then yeah, go with the extra plate. It can never hurt. A little extra is always good. 
Okay, so for this first leg of the test, I am just going to do this with regular symmetrical all-wheel drive. I'm not going to put it into snow dirt mode until I need to. And I expect I will need to on this climb out of here because it's pretty steep and it is covered in ice. Uh, so that will be interesting. So I'm just going to try to keep a slow, steady pace here. I'm going to mow down some of this shrubbery that's grown up in the off-season. So of course rocks with ice on them do make them pretty slippery uh, but we're doing okay here now you might be asking what makes these tires peak rated ah we're spinning on ice on the rocks okay uh, can we do oh there we go so you might be asking what makes these peak rated well it's a combination of factors one of the most important ones is the compound and that it doesn't get it doesn't turn into a hockey puck uh, at low temperatures. Also, uh, additionally, it has siping uh, to help grab onto the ice. Is it as good as a snow ice tire? No, those are going to be even more so in that direction. Uh, but this is a nice compromise if you just are on ice and snow sometimes. Okay, well, we made it this far with just symmetrical all-wheel drive. Next, we have the climb. And uh, yeah, this will be interesting. I've done this in so many vehicles in so many ways, and it is always a little sketchy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this into snow dirt mode. It's not really deep snow, but it might be. Let me think. Uh, anything over an inch, probably deep snow. So we're going to do that. Now, the difference between regular X mode snow dirt and deep snow mud is that the deep snow mud allows for more wheel spin so it flings some of that snow and mud off of the tracks to give you more exposed grip on the tires to kind of help you hustle up so we'll see if this is a good way to do it now i do have to be careful that i don't floor it too fast because once the wheels i think it's over 20 or 25 miles per hour once they start spinning too fast then um xmo turns off so here i am I'm just keeping an easy, steady throttle. I'm not flooring it. Easy, steady throttle. And apparently, I needed a more. Oh, shnikes. I am sliding backwards. And oh, throttle in to stop it. That is all ice. That is literally ice. Ah. I'm a foot from the cliff back there. Yeah, I am officially determining this to be unsafe. We're gonna to go to the next course. There is no way I'm getting up that. And the reason is A, it's a very steep climb. I think it's about 17 degrees if I recall correctly, which is a 30% grade roughly. Um, also, these aren't studded. So once you actually hit ice, 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 at that point, there's nothing you can do. There's no grip. You have zero grip. Um, it doesn't matter how good your tire is. Um, anything outside of studs is not going to give you uh, enough grip to be useful, especially on an incline like that. Okay, let's go on to the next course. I am backing out of here. Oh, and to note, snow dirt, X mode, works in reverse. Actually, they both work in reverse, but I'm just going to do snow dirt to minimize wheel spin. And we're going to use this backup camera, which is okay. Uh, it's good enough for this kind of stuff. I like that it has tracks and little warning zones. Still checking my mirrors just to make sure I don't want to hit anything here. So uh, let's see what this road's like. And I'm definitely walking this road before we drive it. I don't want to replay and yeah, momentum, that's a tough thing. My concern is down here where the uh, road gets very steep and I don't really have any runoff. Dude, that's a lot of ice. That's all ice under there. <sighs> but we're not done yet. We got one more thing we can do. Uh, we're going to go over to the main line, uh, which is a main road, uh, which has a more reasonable grade. 
just over there, and we're going to see how well this thing does. Get back out of here. Thank goodness for backup cameras, even low-res ones like this one. The adventure of getting out of the course now, apparently. So backing up out, this last little bit is a 10 degree climb. It's, oh, ah, it's the ice. Can I get up? I gotta maintain some traction here. Keep the wheel straight. Ah, edge. Let's try that again. Okay, this is sketchy. Let's put it onto X mode, snow dirt. Make sure I'm in that mode. Am I? Turn off that camera. Yep, X mode, snow dirt. Keep my wheel straight, a little momentum here. Yeah, there is a cliff just to my left. Can we get out? Oh, hey, X mode pulls us out. <laughs> okay, so that was just a 10 degree exit and it was sketchy. Um, the rest of the courses, they're all steeper than that. So I think it's a good move to not try the main courses. With that said, let's head to the other road. Whew. I had no idea it would be this weird today. This is this is tough. This is really tough. This is a about a 10 degree hill probably at the worst which is near the end. Um, the main climb. I'll call it out as I'm going, but I think it's probably going to be around 6-7%. Uh, it is ice and snow, just like those other roads. Uh, so there is an element of danger here, but this road is a little bit wider. I have more room to play with. It has a berm, so most likely, unless I have too much speed, I'm not going to fall off the edge. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there's obviously some risks here, but I think this is going to be fine. This is actually closer to a road uh, that you would find in the real world. The roads that we build over there are definitely like forest trail roads, not something you would encounter every day. So if you have a Subaru and you're gonna be hitting some snow and ice, likely it's gonna be on a road like this. So as for setup, I'm gonna put this into deep snow and mud. I wanna get that extra wheel spin to kind of fling off some of the snow so that my sipes are exposed and not clogged up with ice. Let's do it, floor it. <laughs> So the thing with ice and snow is that momentum, it can be your friend, but it can also be your worst enemy. Um, as you keep momentum and you start to go off a wrong line, you know, things can go south very quickly. So I'm keeping momentum as I go up this. That's saying that it's about five degrees. What do we add here? This is around seven degrees. Yeah, this is probably gonna get up to about 10 degrees here in a moment. Oh, come on, keep the throttle in, keep the throttle in. Can we get all the way to the top? As we continue up, it's a little steeper. Oop, a little helter skelter. So you can fling it around. Come on, floor it. Yeah. Yes. Ha! <laughs> yes, this is what the Subaru is for. Woo! Ha! Oop, rock. Okay, got, got around it. And boom, there we go. <sighs> nice. Okay, well, we made it to the top, but we're not done yet because I wanna show you how hill descent control works in slippery conditions. When you're in X mode, uh, it automatically enables hill descent control. And what that does is it helps keep your vehicle in control going down difficult hills. So here we have a hill covered with snow. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach real slow and then take my foot off the brake. And now the vehicle has taken over. And what it's doing is it's reading my feedback based on my steering inputs. It's also, uh, you know, reading conditions, wheel slip, all that stuff. And it's making sure that I can track in the direction that I want to go. Now, the way the Subaru system is designed, that if I want a little more speed, right now I'm at probably around three miles an hour. If I just tap the throttle slightly, so you bring it up to five miles an hour, now it'll keep tracking at five miles an hour. It basically takes your last input down to about three miles per hour. So this system is pretty good. The one thing that I would like it to do is to actually let me go slower. Sometimes three miles per hour is not slow enough 
Also, it takes a moment to catch. It doesn't engage instantaneously. And as we saw on the mud hill where I went down that, I started to slide before it caught, right before I hit that ditch. So not ideal. <laughs> So how can they improve this vehicle? Well, first off, I think that the Forester Wilderness is actually really great. I like it, even though it's a little derpy looking on the outside, in my opinion, I would still drive one of these every day. It drives great on the highway. The MPGs are kind of what you would expect. You're looking around 23, 28 real world. And one reason this gets worse gas mileage than the Super Cross Truck is that 411 rear diff. You have a different final drive, uh, so you get a little bit punchier feel with this one, but the downside of that is that you actually have um, worse MPGs. You know, there's always a trade-off somewhere. What I would like to see added to the entire Wilderness lineup is a form of crawl control. Something like on the Toyota 4Runner, where right now we have hill descent control, that's fine, but I would like it to basically give me a one to five mile per hour cruise control designed for off-road with the maximum amount of brake vectoring around this system to take me both uphills and downhills safely. Now granted, a system like that is more designed for amateurs than it is for somebody who's an expert, but I think it would really open up this vehicle to its true, you know, full capabilities. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.